Robert Maudsley, the real-life Hannibal Lecter who eats criminals. Our story in this video today explores the life of one of the most feared serial killers in UK history. This man poses a great danger to others, and even to himself, that a specially designed prison cell was built to lock him up. Meet Robert Maudsley, the real-life murderer whose chilling crimes inspired the creation of Hannibal Lecter. Number 5. A Rough Childhood Robert Maudsley was born and raised in Liverpool, along with his 11 other siblings. His early childhood days weren't exactly pleasant, as he was often subjected to beatings and abuse from both of his parents. Young Robert was eventually taken and sent to a foster home where he grew up under the care of nuns. His depression and mental instability drove him to attempt to commit suicide several times during his teenage years. He later found himself addicted to substances like drugs. With no penny to his name, Maudsley began offering sexual services to men in order to sustain his drug addiction. Meanwhile, his suicidal tendencies pervaded, and he became even worse, so much so that he was forced to seek psychiatric help. During his talk with doctors, Maudsley confessed hearing voices telling him to kill his parents. Number 4. Committing His First Murder Maudsley committed his first murder in 1974, when he killed a client who hired him for sex a farmer named John Farrell. The two actually became close, but their relationship went sour when he discovered something gruesome about Farrell. He found out that the man was a pedophile, and a proud one at that. Farrell even showed Maudsley pictures of the young children he had sexually abused. This shocking revelation snapped Maudsley out of his mind and into a fit of rage, strangling Farrell killing him right there and then. Maudsley was accused of manslaughter and was sent to Broadmoor Hospital, an asylum for the criminally insane, sentenced for life imprisonment with a recommendation that he was to never be released. Maudsley spent his first three years at the hospital without causing any trouble. Number 3. Hannibal the Cannibal In 1977, Maudsley and another inmate named David Cheeseman planned to kill another patient named David Francis. Francis was found out to be accused and convicted of child sexual abuse. The two locked themselves in a cell with the third inmate for nine long hours. Maudsley and his friend tortured the pedophile for the entire time that they held him before eventually killing him at the end. Upon recovery of the corpse, it was found that the victim was severely beaten. His skull was smashed up so badly that parts of Francis's brain had popped out. It was here that the cannibal rumor started. According to accounts taken from witnesses, Maudsley grabbed a spoon to sample the squished brain. These claims were apparently corroborated by the medical personnel, who reported that a considerable amount of the victim's brain had gone missing. Adding to the fact was the lodged spoon that Maudsley allegedly used to scoop the goods from the skull. This led authorities to believe that Maudsley had indeed eaten part of his victim. The incident didn't sit well with the people at Broadmoor Hospital. Maudsley was immediately transferred to Wakefield Prison, where his next victims awaited. Number 2. Living Up to His Reputation the Broadmoor Meat Feast debacle earned Maudsley a notorious reputation, so much so that the Wakerfield inmates became wary of his presence. They couldn't have been more right to be scared and paranoid with this guy. In 1978, Maudsley claimed the life of another prisoner, the body of which he hid under his bed. Inmates claimed that earlier that day, the killer invited some of them to his cell. They all refused, except for Salni Darwood, who Maudsley garroted to death. In that very same day of the incident, 
Maudsley killed yet another inmate named Bill Roberts. For this, he used a spoon, which he fashioned into a rough, pointed weapon. Using this makeshift dagger, Maudsley stabbed Roberts several times, with one going right through the ear. That stab penetrated the victim's noggin so deep that when he pulled the weapon out, it was covered in what appeared to be, you guessed it, brains. Although it wasn't exactly said if he once again took a mouthful of it, some believed he did grab a bite. After killing the two Wakefield inmates, Maudsley casually walked into the guard's office, surrendered the dagger, and said that the roll call that day would be short of two heads. Number 1. Too Dangerous to Let Loose The two brutal murders further cast an atmosphere of fear inside the Wakefield prison system. Both the prisoners and the guards had come to agree that Maudsley was indeed too dangerous to be around. Some protested that he'd be taken from the prison. Others requested solitary confinement. And in 1983, a specially designed two-cell unit was built underneath the prison. The panel of the cage is made of bulletproof perspex. There's a hole just big enough for the guards to pass Maudsley his food and other necessities. Inside, a concrete slab was propped for him to sleep on. Fixtures like tables and chairs were made out of compressed cardboard. If the details seemed a bit too familiar, then it might remind you of the cell used to contain the infamous character, Hannibal Lecter, played by the great Anthony Hopkins in the movie Silence of the Lambs. In fact, the character itself was born out of inspiration from Maudsley's horrific exploits. Maudsley has remained in that special cage for nearly 40 years already, and by the looks of things, it appears that his isolation will continue until the day he dies. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.